We said George Osborne has basically got economic policies that are equivalent to drug dealing. He's a drug dealer. He's a crackhead. He's, uh, two days later, we find out that a top advisor to George Osborne has been caught on videotape smoking crack. No! Tory economic policy forecaster and Professor Douglas McWilliams took the illegal drug during a late night binge in a squalid London flat. Number 11 Downing Street. Sir said he was a regular at the corn tree. He predicted we'll be 165 years better off with his policies. The amazing thing about the policies here in the UK, how's everybody doing? I see you smiling there. She's been working on her yoga. A lot of people say they just watch the show, you know, because it's Stacy, because I'm not like crazy man. She has to deal with it. So the policies here in the United Kingdom are kind of interesting because, you know, they want to make the debt look palatable. They want to make the debt look smaller. They don't want to, you know, tell people that the debt is skyrocketing, that the UK under Osborne has doubled the debt. It's like 1.6 trillion pounds. So they can't, they can't do anything to stop the debt because people don't pay enough in taxes to offset the debt because they don't need your debt. You see, they, all they need to do when they want to make money is just print more money. Bank of England say, here, have all the money you want. It's your percent interest rate. Take it all. Take a trillion. Take five trillion. How many trillions of dollars they printed since the financial crisis in 2008? 22 trillion. So they don't need your job. They don't need your taxes. Uh, but they need to make cosmetic adjustments. They need to make it look like they're doing something right. So to make the, uh, the debt in this country look smaller as compared to the GDP, recently Osborne has declared, that this current government, that they will now include in the GDP, uh, a, give it a $10 billion boost, drugs and prostitution. All right, so the Office of National Statistics, each of UK 60,879 prostitutes, took 25 clients a week at an average price of 67 pounds 16p. Are there any prostitutes in that? Can you confirm that amount? Is the Office of National Statistics correct? Is it 67 pounds per session on a prostitute? Oh, uh, this fellow charges double that. Okay. Uh, it also included there are, according to your government, here 38,000 heroin users with sales of 754 million pounds and 37 pounds a gram. Again, I defer to the audience as I have a good front fit. No. Yeah, back there, the one nodding. I think that's, yes, he's saying 37 or he's just nodding. Yeah. So now we've been, of course, battling it out with uh, the regulators and with uh, those who are trying to keep what we have to say from getting to the public, but this is not always working. And we have, I think, some fantastic triumphs over the past year. For example, we completely destroyed Wanga. Wanga, you know, six months ago, they were bragging that they, they had raised interest rates in this country to 5,853%. 800, that was six months ago. Today, they just announced a uh, 37 million pound loss. <laughs> uh, after uh, our, we just unmercifully have gone after Wonga and our friend Russell Brand, of course. Russell is always no applause for Russell, yeah. <laughs> Sing it, Russell. It's like everywhere. <laughs> Too much. All right. So, um, huge freaking loss. So, what's Wonga going to do? They, they're weighing up a name change. Uh, as a way to rebrand the company. Yeah, so we have to think of a, yeah, we got to think of names for the new Wanga because there's a million new payday loans originated every month here. And, um, you know, Wanga's out of business, so they're going to rebrand themselves. They're going to come up with some names. You know, uh, prostitutes, whores, payday loans, incorporated. Uh, anything that would uh, fully flesh out what they do, but the next target after Wonga, and give yourself a round of applause for killing Wonga, yeah, 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 Wonga's dead, yeah. So now the next the target uh, of our program, of our campaign, has to be 
HSBC. Yeah. Right? Don't we have a green on that side? HSBC is um, here's five reasons, the top five reasons why the HSBC executives uh, could be in line for uh, decapitation. So here's well, decapitation works. I mean, it has a story. The Tower of London is quite famous for this. You know, it's a deterrent. It's not a decapitalization. Uh, that apparently doesn't hold any muster. You see, you have to actually decapitate. So the number uh, five reasons why uh, the chairman, uh, Douglas Flint, have you seen this guy? It was like, I don't know, 800, 800 or so. But uh, I think the um, that 10 ton fat burg in Chelsea sewer system, I think that was under this guy's flag. This one fella. Uh, here's number one. Here's LIBOR rigging, we know, is pure. Barclay, well, LIBOR is involved. Uh, HSBC, it's a consortium. Uh, Barclays, Lloyds, Royal Bank of Scotland, and HSBC are the big top four banks. And you are correct, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Big round of applause here. Thank you. There's an employee of the month at Barclays. So, Barclays is involved. But, okay, fine. Don't work at Barclays. Fine, that's fine. So, yes, LIBOR rigging for a massive scandal. Hundreds of millions of pounds stolen from you know, the average person, but that's not really necessarily the number one reason to decapitate the Douglas Flint, the head of Barclay. Number two, how about this for some? If they open 100,000 fake Swiss accounts, uh, various tax evasion, money laundering. How does this rank on our score of bad, bad behavior? Give it a middling to fair, bad, 100,000 accounts in Switzerland, complete fake accounts, complete fraud, hiding gazillions of dollars of money. Good, there's one for you. Right. Number three. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if they if they are doing actually bad things. They violated U.S. sanctions on Iran by removing the word Iran from wire transfers. <laughs> Pretty bad. Sound good? Sound good? But they also did the same thing for uh, Sudan, Burma, and North Korea. Yes, every single bank. We have to start somewhere, though. We must begin. At, you know, the, the fish rots from the head. We got to start somewhere. We just we got to you know selectively mow down the bank. Are just burying them up to their heads and just take a huge prick and lawn bar and go right down the path there. Right? I mean, you would leave the shark. You would be a part of it. But uh, bear with me. Let's go for another reason. The next reason. Let's see if this warrants obliteration. Uh, number four. The United States sent uh, HSBC a cease and desist letter asking them to stop funding Al Qaeda. They re they refused. They refused. They refused. Uh, an Al Qaeda fan, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. An Al Qaeda fan. You've heard about those teens running away to ISIS. This is their mom. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. There's the Mrs. ISIS runaway teen runaways for 2015. She's, she, you don't recognize her because she doesn't have a burqa on. There she is. Ladies. Okay, that's what she looks like right here. See, it also has a sex shop in Mecca. There's number one. Play off each other. Number one. They work directly with the Sinaloa cartel in Mexico and help kill 60,000 people. Yay! Yeah, yeah HSBC. Many by beheadings. Yeah. All right. Well, you would think of all this horrible behavior. The drugs were up. That was your line on you. You were like my counter points here. I get nothing. You sucked all the oxygen out of the room, and uh, you haven't exhaled yet. We need. We, we want to give and take. No. Oh really? Okay, we'll get into that later. I see what's going on. That's okay. Well, this summer, we'll come back. Think about it. Give it some thought. All right, so uh, who are these bankers in the UK? You know, they are uh, essentially ruled over by the banker in charge, uh, the um, Marconi, who runs the 
Fish and chips. No. Who runs the Bank of England? And Mark Carney, of course, says that jailing bankers will not fix bad behavior. Now, the Bank of England, of which he uh, runs, is uh, now uh, uh, there's a probe into whether the staff held rig auctions before quantitative easing in 2009. Uh, Bank of England caught up in a lot more rigging and caught in collusion with the Treasury trying to hide a 48-billion pound black hole of debt as part of the seven billion stolen during the pensions and insurance scam from Osborne. Uh, stressed Bank of England official stabbed himself to death. Christopher Diamond, 52, found in his car after stabbing himself. 12 bankers have committed suicide in the last year. This is an enormous trend. These bankers, these top bankers, they're committing all this fraud and they're killing themselves. What's the connection? What's going on? We find out that Jamie Diamond at J.P. Morgan has bought life insurance for employees in the name of the bank. Is there a pattern? Let's see. Well, J.P. Morgan's associate and wife found dead in an apparent murder-suicide inside their New Jersey home. So check this out. This guy bought insurance on his wife, killed her, and then to make more money, he killed himself. <laughs> He's rich. Big rich. He's even being the chancellor. Here's a guy, uh, Lloyd. Did you mention Lloyd? I haven't heard you. He's been that one. I'm Lloyd. We need a substitute heckler. Anyone else want to be heckler? You know, this is, well, any hecklers out there? We need a heckler. We need an app. Heckler. Well, quick. The Uber of hecklers. Oh, well. So Lloyd's is another big thing. They're, 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 they're involved in mis-selling scandals. So the pressure was such that in one case, an advisor missold insurance to himself, his wife, and a colleague to make his quota number that he needed to missile a certain volume each month to keep his job. Nice. Uh, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, some banks are so large that it's difficult for us to prosecute them. Um, judge takes pity on the embarrassed RBS bankers who committed a three million pound fraud. We haven't talked about RBS in a while. Or, yeah, RBS, of course, uh, the bank that you own. You feeling good about it? You own the RBS. You own this bank. So uh, two RBS bankers have walked away from a three million pound property fraud without jail time because Judge Rebecca Pule, QC, where's my Pule? Oh, there he is. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Reflect the area. Uh, Maria Pule. Rebecca Maria Pule. Hello! Hey, Maria! Rebecca Pule, QC! Uh, believes they have already suffered as they were embarrassed by the incident. <laughs> That's right, Plucky. You got it now. Well, uh, we're all getting plucked, aren't we? That's right, Plucky. I'm Plucky. I'm getting fucking plucked. I'm Plucky. I'm... That's a terrible song. <laughs> Here we have another fellow, Bill Black, in the United States. The city of London became the most criminogenic environment in the world for financial fraud, which is why so many UK banks and units of foreign banks located in the city have caused the major scandals in the UK and globally. Right here you find Madoff, AIG, Lehman, LIBOR, and does anyone want to guess why that is? Why is there so much criminality in the banking system right here in London? Why are they, this is the most criminogenic, according to Bill Black, a guy who put 1,800 bankers in jail in the 1980s, because of one very simple reason, there's a law on the books right here in the city of London that allows for infinite rehypothecation. Can you imagine what that might be? Infinite rehypothecation, well what is rehypothecation? I mean, rehypothecation is when you can lend against securities. If you've got securities in your account, you can lend. Now there's a rule, like in the United States, where you can't lend more than 140% value of those securities in your account. But here in London, it's the only jurisdiction in the world that allows for infinite rehypothecation. You can sell the same damaged crap bond, not once, not twice, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, 10,000 times. Infinite amount of times. There's no law against it. So why do we have trillions of these pounds being printed by the Bank of England? Why do these banks simply roll over all the debt? Why do they ever, ever go to jail? Why is there never any prosecution? Because to pay a fine, they just sell the same bond over and over and over again. You can bond 
You can find loins of 10 billion pounds. It doesn't matter. They can just sell the same bonds that they have in their books an infinite number of times. They never have to pay a penny. And that's the way it's set up in this country. And that's why the, uh, you've got this incredible divergence between uh, the top and the bottom. Now, the cost of bailouts of the public, 47 pounds in debt for every one pound in GDP that's been generated since 2008. So every pound, every, every pound of GDP that's grown up, there's 47 pounds of uh, debt. Every week, the interest on the debt in this country is one billion pounds per week. Scotland? Scotland? I think Scotland's going to be free soon. Scotland will be separate. Anyone want to move to Scotland? Nicholas Sturgeon seems like a bright gal. The David Cameron scared to death of her. They're going to do a little referendum again. Uh, since the 2008 crisis, the global debt is up 57 trillion. It's now at 200 trillion. The debt to GDP went from 269 percent to 286 uh, percent. So clearly, uh, the debts are skyrocketing in value. Now, I will at this point point out something. This is a bit of a demonstration. I'm going to use one of uh, the uh, banknotes. I have to explain this to you in a way that I think will break it all down. This is a 20 pound note. Now the problem is, well, what's the what's the solution? Why are we bothering with all this? How do we stop this? Well, this is the actually the genesis of the problem. In 1694, the Bank of England was created, the longest running bank in the world. Since then, there's been 700 paper currencies that have been created. 600 have gone to zero. The average lifespan of the paper currency or fiat currency like this, backed up by nothing, no intrinsic value, is 15 years. This one is the longest running one, the Bank of England. Although it used to be a pound sterling, it used to be a pound of sterling, but they went off the sterling standard. This is just a paper. It's just a paper with the queen on it. It has no intrinsic value. So the problem is that every time you spend one of these 20 pound notes, uh, the Bank of England gives one of the folks down in the city of London 10,000 pounds for free. With no interest, zero percent interest, no terms. So what you have to do is you have to start breaking your the, the bond, breaking the chain, breaking your addiction to this paper money, breaking your your your, your affiliation. The queen must just appear like a slut. She should be out there whoring. If the queen were whoring 24/7, the GDP, according to Osborne, would look great compared to the debt. She's not carrying her weight, is she? She should be, you know, like Catherine the Great at least had sex with her horse. She was doing her bit. You know, the queen does nothing. Fostering an illusion. A dangerous illusion. So the only thing that can replace this odious, can, catastrophic, non-existent money supply of course, you have three options. You have gold, you have silver. They're a bit cumbersome. That leaves us with crypto, cryptocurrency, crypto, beer, beer, and cryptocurrency. We start going, Bitcoin. And before I leave, later on this evening, I will be giving each and every one of you who wants it a hundred of these coins on a uh, scratch card. Also, in case some of this information is revolting, I brought vomit bags. It comes in handy. So we're going to, uh, okay, I got a heckler. What's up? Talk to me. Absolutely, prostitutes will take start by. Absolutely. That on the, right off Wardour Street in Soho, there's a, there's a pancake uh, shop called uh, Breakfast in America. On the second floor are some of the sweetest rent boys you'll ever, ever see. And uh, they've said they're more than happy to take start. And as a matter of fact, you can buy a, get a bag of smack just like three blocks away. So you can have a whole part. Then take start going as well. And it's not recorded anywhere, so the cops won't bother you. So yeah, that's a great thing about crypto. It's not part of the, uh, the illusion of the world. So uh, let's uh, again refer to the uh, enormous stack of uh, factoids that I've accumulated because uh, that only work maybe two days a week on my show and then I have nothing to do. The uh, U.S. government, there's a new rule that allows banks to completely make shit up. <laughs> banks are rebooking their assets from available for sale to held to maturity. That's just a technical term. That just, again, it's like incident rehypothecation. They can simply the banks and just say, you know, this was a bag of shit, now it's a billion dollars. 
bonds and other uh, securities uh, bought that need to be sold to pay if all investors have lost 90% of value of sold, so they classify them as never needing to be sold. Well, that settles that then. Citigroup, okay, it's American banks, it's just not a UK thing. Citigroup ordered to pay 285 million derivatives fraud. Uh, Goldman Sachs packaging subprime mortgages that they knew were bad, they sell them to customers, and then they make bets against their customers. Oh. Nice. Uh, oh, finally, somebody in this country is mounting a protest. Finally. Uh, and you mentioned Barclays earlier. Uh, the title of the story is, that's, that's the wrong kind of deposit as a Barclays bank customer poos all over the floor. Again, this could be a GDP boost. Middle-aged man described as well to do, walked calmly into a branch of Barclays and started leaving non-monetary deposits on the floor. <laughs> From the bottom of his shorts. In front of heart. One eyewitness said the man looked calm but angry. I can find that. Uh, secret Goldman tapes are released. Secret tapes that show regulators coming under intense pressure to overlook transgressions. Goldman have been made public. 48 hours of evidence recordings made by lawyers, including helping the bank commit fraud. Lloyd Blackfine, the chairman, said, we're doing God's work. And uh, let's see. Well, blah, 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 blah. blah. RBS, 17 million bonus for thieving uh, loan unit. Here's an interesting story. You know that RBS, the Royal Bank of Scotland, has a division within the bank called the Global Restructuring Group. And during the crisis, their job was to target their own customers, find companies that were just straddling bankruptcy, and then deprive them of loans to force them into bankruptcy. And then another unit at RBS would buy that company out of bankruptcy and sell it to investors for profit. That's your bank. Vince Cable, the business secretary, has... He, he said, uh, he signaled, here's a quote, he signaled his unease. Wow! He's, here's another uh, interesting problem with the, uh, in, the, in, in, the uh, in America, of course, all the prisons are uh, privately run, privately owned, and they trade on the stock exchange. You can buy Prison Corp of America, you can buy shares in that prison. And it's a fast-growing company in America, has the biggest prison population in the world. Uh, in absolute terms, bigger than China, bigger than any, any other country. And they, this company has done deals with local municipalities all over the country. And the deal is that w you can outsource all of your prison needs to us, the private corporation, in exchange you guarantee us 98% occupancy. Wow. So, uh, you know, there you go. There it is. The three strikes rule in America, three strikes, you know, three strikes are in prison. Who wrote that? The people who own the prisons. Who trade them on the exchange. Now, the reason you can't put a banker in jail is because the moment you put them in jail, they simply buy the bank and set themselves free. I'm shocked. Oh, yeah. Uh, how about uh, Greece? We'll talk about Greece a little bit. for destruction, for complete annihilation. Well documented. Lloyd Blankfein, the guy from Goldman Sachs, the uh, Hank, uh, John Paulson, the hedge fund manager, Papa Drea, the leader of Greece, on record, got together before the country collapsed, talked about how to collapse the country using financial derivatives. It was only a $300 billion GDP. They collapsed the country. Papa Drea made $50 million in an account in his wife's name, in a Swiss account, totally documented. And they claimed that uh, they have no idea why the country collapsed. Now the country is, of course, requiring a third bill. Out, and it uh, looks like there's going to be an uprising in Greece, which there should be. And the folks down there in Greece are going to stick it to the uh, Royal, you know, the uh, European Central Bank and the ECB, and that should set off another chain reaction like we saw in 2008, but it's much bigger, much worse, much more damaging. And wouldn't that be fantastic? You know, it would be. And that's what we really need to cleanse the system. It's either decapitalization or decapitation. Take your point, Dana. Take your pick. Um, who's he? All right, so finally, as we roll down and we uh, hit, 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 before I bring on the next, the next act, I will leave you with a few juicy quotes. Here's uh, one from Warren Buffett. 
famous millionaire, he says, there's class war warfare, all right, but it's my class, the rich class, that's making war, and we're winning. Sean Fitzgerald, former CEO of Anglo Irish, because Ireland's not immune. The cause of our problem is global, so I can't say sorry with any kind of sincerity. I suggest you cut the sa sacred cows of the Irish society, children, the elderly, and healthcare. Now, Sean, the Anglo Irish Bank, of course, is it, what they, they it's not even a uh, they don't even have deposits from regular people it's just a bank that funds real estate the real estate speculation in Ireland and um, they uh, got the government an extraordinarily corrupt Irish government to guarantee all of their debts uh, and then the government uh, imposed those debts onto the population in the form of uh, austerity and tax rises and they forced uh, most of the population into uh, suffering extreme you know, poverty and um, they didn't have to do it because the debt is non-recourse debt from Anglo Irish, which by definition means you don't have to pay it back. But for some reason, they, uh, the government allowed them to force them to pay it all back. So finally, we end up with uh, you know one simple fact is that over the past ten years in this country, the top end is sixty-four percent richer. The uh, the poor are uh, fifty-seven percent poor. Okay, now that's not because you're not working. It's not because uh, morally, it's not. It's because it's been engineered. It's been an engineered collapse, an engineered uh, transfer of trillions, uh, as I just described it, using financialization, using bank fraud, uh, which is never punished, which is always paid for with money that can be borrowed at zero percent interest, and uh, and as a result, there's uh, there's either decapitalization or decapitation, which is coming soon. So uh, you know my position. You know, the only good banker is a dead banker. So, you know, we can all pray. Thank you. Now, now ladies and gentlemen, we're bringing on the next, the next spectacular musical act.